My BJJ, I had my first CIMT two weeks ago. Left is 0.66 millimeters, right is 0.80. In a previous video report, you shared you just had one value. Are they averaged? Is it common to see discrepancy like mine? Yes, left and right. That's why we scan both sides of the neck. It is very common to have discrepancies between the left and the right. I'm not sure who did the, the CIMT. So depending on what organization, sometimes their numbers are a tad bit confusing to just look at kind of as a whole. In the previous report, you shared as one value are the average. They are not normally averaged as far as individual numbers. Like when you get your cardio risk report back, their average CCA is an average of 600 measurements. So yes, that one is averaged. But then they go beyond that and they will tell you what the largest part is and they will also tell you if it is in fact a plaque it will be spelled out if it's echogenic which means it's already hard and like a, a cyst or if it's soft like the soft squishy ones or if it's heterogeneous where it's kind of in between the two and that's the great thing about the cardio risk is not only does it tell you how big it is where it is but it also tells you what kind it is but yes it is very very common to see discrepancies from the left side to the right side my left side looks absolutely perfect gorgeous and a blip in sight my right side looks like a train wreck so it is very very common to see discrepancies left to right and very important to have both sides scanned that's why we scan both sides on the slide that ari put up about the results from the municipalities this was just general how many people had red markers it didn't specifically go into right versus left but the reports that you get from cardio risk are very specific that you can take to your healthcare provider hopefully will benefit from this and help as you pointed out i've got some that were done february 2015, October 2015, September 2016, where you see the progression in arterial age. You also see, to start off with, I had a plaque on my right side, nothing on my left. A couple of other interesting things. So at age 57, I had a 73-year-old arteries with an average. As BJJ asked, do they do averages? Yes, they do. Average of 0.884. October 15. Those of you that are statin haters, one of the biggest things I did was added five milligrams of rosuvastatin, generic Crestor. I hated it. I'd known that I needed to have statins for a while and I was a statin hater and didn't do it. But there's some other things that go on with these. I personally also lost about 10 pounds, made a couple of adjustments. I've always had a very healthy lifestyle, but there were some adjustments that seeing these numbers just motivated me to make. And that's one of the biggest values of these. These were not the only three CIMTs I had over the next 18 months. You know, I was doing these on a regular basis on patients. I was getting on a regular basis every month or two. And it wasn't that these numbers were jumping up and down all over the place. There was a clear and steady curve showing a decrease in my arterial age. Now, as we've talked about, because there's no radiation associated with this technology, this nomogram, a nomogram is normal grams. It's showing a picture of what you'd see. This is with boys, the blue line, and the pink line is, guess what? That's the ladies. And this on the left is the mean that we've seen with the research that I've shown where we've done tens of thousands. The nomogram starts at age five. You can see some changes coming out of the womb. That would be with people like me that are born at 10 and a half pounds instead of less than eight and a half pounds. I've got what we now know, babies born over eight and a half pounds have what we call epigenetic risk factors. In other words, if you're more than eight and a half pounds, your mom likely had some significant prenatal diabetes. That's why you'll see your standard docs that still tend to do OGTT, oral glucose tolerance tests, is in pregnant women because they know how important this issue is. So I had a significant risk factor coming out of the womb. I doubt very much that had a CIMT been done on me that it would have been normal at birth. It would have been higher. So the way you use this nomogram is you look at the number that you're given. When I was 57, so I go over here, 0.884, go to my age, 57, and that's how that line that dot was created. About a year later, age 58, I've already dropped significantly down to 0 0.744, 0 0.75. You go to 0.75, you go to age 59, and you see I'm already now basically at the average for men my age. I kept up some of the changes that I talked about, and at age 59, I had continued to drop. So you go over to 0 0.672 for a 59-year-old. Now I've dropped to the average 
average age of a female. So I was happy. I'm sharing this for a couple of reasons, not so much because it's about me. Be aware, it's unusual to get this kind of decrease in plaque. You tend to lose the inflammatory components, the liquid, the cytokines, the immune cells that are part of that plaque. You tend to not really lose so much of the LDL that's there itself. But the LDL alone, it's not inflammatory. It's not a danger. It doesn't cause clot. It's that inflammatory component that causes it. And so when I had the higher CIMT, the intima media thickness, I had a lot of that fluid in there, a lot of those cytokines, a lot of those immune cells, and they just continued to drop out as I did that work. 